What's up, everybody, and welcome to a new year. You were not expecting that. I'm really excited to do this collab episode with my partner in crime, Cody Kelly, on his show, It Is What It Is, and my show, Health and Fitness Redefined, guys. We're going to be talking all about New Year's. Cody, you excited? I'm super excited, man. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you again for having me on the show. You know, there's uh, anytime somebody asks you about the show, it's always an honor. There are certain shows too, because I know it's going to be a cool vibe, a cool experience. Uh, and then you just want to connect with great people and great friends like Anthony. Man, I'm super excited about this to talk about New Year, New You, man. So let's get it going. Yeah, man. And we're doing a nice little, we figured just instead of having each other on each other's shows, let's do one together. Let's keep it fresh, exciting. It's 2022, and it's going to be just one hell of a year. I feel it in my bones, man. No, same. I think, honestly, and this is something I've been focusing, it's 2022 has to be a year of accountability, right? Like, I think with everything that has happened and has transpired, I think there is an onus and a responsibility that every human now plays a part into this thing going forward and you got to own it. Like you have to own the process. You have to own your life, your ecosystem and literally look at how to push it forward. And I'm super excited uh, because, you know, I don't want I, for myself. I said, look, no excuses. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happens, whatever, you just want to be able to push it forward and to drive it forward. And I think honestly, 2022 is going to be a better year. I think, you know, we're going to get, Hopefully, and I'm really praying that this pandemic is under control. But I think overall, it's going to be a year that, you know, those that have really grinded, you know, and have really set up for themselves a, 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 a viable path forward, you're going to really see the fruit of your hard work come to play. So I'm super excited. And I don't know if you even know this, but I'm getting married this year, man. This is it. Countdown's hey, on. <laughs> hey, I'm happy, man. Send me the invite, man. April and I will be there. <laughs> Deal. We're going to Aruba, man, in May. I'm pumped. Let's, let's do it. That's a hey, destination with it. I'm liking it. <laughs> Somewhere on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's got to be a good year. And that's what I'm going to start the show out, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, the year I'm getting married, I'm opening up a, a second spot. I'm excited. But I want to talk about new year's resolutions because i think it's something that used to be a really big thing back 20 30 years ago and yeah. then it just now becomes like a stigma like haha you made a new year's resolution and then you end up not doing anything about it and everyone just kind of makes fun of you I, I don't know if you agree with that but that's what i'm i see in my industry at least a lot yeah and i want to bring it back it's important mm. like some you said a great word accountability yeah. And we need to keep ourselves accountable. And that's why I like a day you you start fresh and you write a goal and you actually stick to it. Think of how much better you will feel as you pursue that goal you set for the new year. Yeah. Dude, I, I think so. What happens, I think, is particularly when it comes to fitness, you you know, a lot of people I, I say the January crowd is very inconsistent, right? Like January to January 3 or that first Monday, whatever the holiday falls on that first Monday, everywhere gyms are packed. I mean, with, you know, new people, you know, new clothing, new sports supplements. Like it's the newness is so it's almost aggravating because you know, they're not going to continue. Like, like anybody that knows it just knows like it's because they've invested into the newness and not into the process. And it's like when you see that, okay, it's like you got the new Nikes. That's cool. Okay, you got the new leggings. All right. You got the new, you know, whatever. You got the new wrist wraps. You got all the new stuff, but you didn't get a new, you didn't get a new attitude, a new mindset, a new discipline, right? So you have equipment, but you don't have character. And that's the difference, right? So I, I do think we need to bring it back because the reality is, I think because of what happened, what has happened and everything in the pandemic, I think a lot of, um, uh, what I was, I won't say setback, but I think just people are feeling a little oppressed and, you know, the weight of the world is on their shoulders. But I do think eventually you got to say, okay, life, as weird as it is, as awkward as it can be, 
I got to find a way to move forward. I got to find a way to crawl out of this. And I have to own my own part that I played in it. Right. And the problem, the problem with new year's resolutions is it's great to have hope. It's great to have a vision. It's better to understand what's actually going to make that vision come to pass. It's better to fall in love with the sacrifices and the pain that is associated with that vision. And if you can fall in love with the, the low moments, you know, that tie into that vision, you'll be there. Like you'll get that, you know, that physique, you know, you'll drop those pounds. You'll, you'll get a tighter waist, whatever your goals are, you'll get there, but you first have to fall in love with the truth of how you see yourself, not just seeing yourself. And a lot of people, I think, have a false image of what they see. They don't understand what's behind that door. Right. So I think, you know, accountability has to be the A word. Accountability <laughs> has to be the word for 2022 because everybody's accountable. Like we're, we're all adults, you know, everybody has a part to play in their own success. You can't just wish for it. You can't just hope for it. like there's a there's a gradual step and process of failures, of setbacks, of investment, of sacrifice, of pain, of agony, of, of, of betrayal in some sense. But all those emotions come to form this weird positive conclusion in the end. Right. And I think when you accept that, like it is what it is. That's why I'm <laughs> sorry. Part of the book. Love, love it is that what it is, right? right there, man. <laughs> It'll be cool. <laughs> I want to talk about two things you mentioned real quick. Yeah. The first one, that New Year's rush to the gym. I got to say, I brought up stigma for a reason because that rush has died over the last five years. I've been in this industry for a long time now, and I've seen a drop in how many people make that New Year's resolution to lose weight because they people make fun of them because they're saying, you're not going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. You're going to give up after a week. So you really don't see that new year's rush anymore to go back and to take care of yourself so they just kind of go eh whatever and throw it away and then the the next thing you mentioned was the being at the bottom and falling in love with yourself that was so deep i love that with a burning passion you got to be able to pick yourself up by the bootstraps when you're down failing at your goal and just say all right now I can do it and get back into it and just go. I worked out. Trust me, not every workout that I go to and you can attest to this is like, oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I want to go home. And that's all you're thinking about is ending the workout, but you get through it. And then after you get through that workout, it's like, all right, I feel better. I feel refreshed and it's easier to get back into it and do it. But I want to ask you, Cody, because it's all about keeping ourselves accountable and being an example for others. And that's what I believe in. So what's your new year's resolution to yourself and how are you going to keep yourself accountable to do it? Sure. I think for myself is execution. So I've, I've done a lot. I've, I've thrown a lot of darts at the wall to see if something sticks. Right. And I think we all do it right. Like, is this my passion? Is this my calling? Like I'm happy where I am. I'm happy where I am professionally you know, I'm happy about the joint venture my wife and I have with the launch of this new brand. You know, I'm happy in that, you know, regards and I'm happy with everything up to this point for my accountability is I want to make it stable and then I want to make it prosper. Right. And I think those are two different ways of looking at it. And I think that just comes with execution, you know, because, and you know, Anthony, you alluded to it. Not. Every day you don't feel like being the best version of yourself. You know, there's days I wake up and be like, I don't want to do that. You know, there's days I don't want to run. I don't want to work out. I don't want to lift. I don't want to sweat. You know, there's days I don't want to get the four to five meals a day. And like, I, I just don't want to do it. But by doing it over time, you build something that people will notice. Right. And what I've learned, uh, particularly uh, in, in business is that, you know, a looks can be deceiving <laughs> B, you know, the, the reality is you have to be as excited about what you do and how you do it when you're achieving quota, when you're growing, when revenue is at an all time high, when you're sailing and, and everything is cool 
And when you're not, when nobody's returning your call, nobody's visiting your business, you look at your Google Analytics and you had zero visitors for the day. Uh, you look at your orders and you had zero orders for the day. You got to be just as lasered focused and as happy about your product and your offerings as you were as you are when you're killing it. Because the reality is you're supposed to be consistent, right? Like these are momentary swings. You're going to have times of just winning and like, oh, man, everything is just, just great and I, it couldn't be any better. And then you're going to have times of questioning your why, you know, like, why do I even do this? You know, the, the embarrassment, you're going to have the feelings of insecurity. You're going to feel like everybody's talking about you, even when there's silence. You, so you got to be able to shut out all these voices and keep focused. And it's not, it's not easy. I'll be the first to tell you, hu being human is exactly that, is being human. Uh, but the accountability part is no matter how I feel, no matter where I am in that space, no matter, you know, if it's a good day, if it's a great day, if it's a super great day, if it's just an average day, I'm going to be present. I'm going to say and do what I said I'm going to do. And I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain. And then the other thing is I'm not going to judge somebody else for what you might feel is dropping the ball. Everybody has a capacity. Everybody has a limitation. And sometimes their capacity doesn't match your capacity, but that's okay. They're not you, right? right? So you can only do what you can do. And once you've done it, then you just live, right? So that's that's how I'm, I'm handling 2022. I have to focus on how can Cody just execute better. Yeah, I, I love that. I'll talk about a little bit what I'm planning on doing and how I do it just so people can get an understanding because obviously I'm in a million places at once. But I loved how the handling when you're down in the dumps and liking what you do. So, I mean, not to bring it back up, but I mean, my gym got closed for seven months. Everything I put my life into and all the risks I took in my life, like I watched my business fall, burn and slowly die from the inside. And there's something I can do about it. Instead of doing what most people did and hiding a ball, I said, let me start my own podcast. And here we are, <laughs> yeah. almost two years in, pushing through this, and it's been a lot of fun. And I really appreciate all of our listeners and everything. It's been amazing. But that's kind of the point. There's always opportunity and adversity. There's always something you can do to bring it up. So what am I looking to do for the new year? I'm looking to really start ramping things back up. I'm not going to say to myself, what if I close again? What if they shut us down? I'm just going to take it day by day and be better than I was yesterday. And what I love and a great way to keep you guys a little bit of accountability to what you're doing is I have very, I have broad goals, which are be better than I was last year. It's always, that's always my saying year's resolution, be better than I was last year, constantly push myself forward. And then I have very specific goals like business goals, for example, or a view goals for the podcast. I set these and then I check back in quarterly. So at the end of three months, I'm looking again going, where am I? What can I work on? How can I improve? You know, something that I need to get better at that I'm going to have my audience get better at, start writing these down. Hmm. Take your New Year's resolution, write it down, put it somewhere you can see it next to your bedstand, on your refrigerator, in your phone, and keep yourself accountable by constantly looking at that and remembering and instead of throwing it by the wayside. So when you have those really bad days, you're looking at it saying, this is what I need. How can I get there? And then every day for that year, you're thinking about how you can get there. And I'm going to do this too. We talked about last year, if you want to shoot all the way back a year, about SMART goals. Cody, you know what SMART goals are? Yeah, specific. But yeah, the acronym, yeah. <laughs> Measurable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And that's the biggest thing. Keep it specific, keep it measurable, keep it attainable. So don't pick something that's like, I'm going to get $10 million cash in a briefcase. <laughs> kind of ties into realistic and then timely set a time for it. I want to be hit this by this. I want to hit this by this. And this is going to really help you improve and be better. And then you can say, I went better instead of be looking down and wondering where time goes and how things kind of got caught up in the fray and how am I 30 pounds heavier and 
how did this happen in my life? You're constantly checking up and that's going to help your happiness. Cody, I don't know if you knew this, but I mentioned this on the show a few times is that you get a dopamine release, not when you hit your goal, but in the process of achieving it. So you get happy when you know you're getting close to achieving your goal, not when you actually hit that goal. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So you constantly have to set goals to keep yourself accountable, keep yourself happy, keep yourself engaged. You're going to watch your energy level skyrocket. And it's not the people that hate it and are successful. They fall down into these slumps on themselves, which is why they constantly set new boundaries. The best of the best constantly are saying, I mean, look at Elon Musk, like guys, a billionaire, and he's setting goals for himself to be better because he knows he needs this to keep himself accountable, to keep himself pushing forward. A little bit no, there, I, mean, I, think, I think Elon's a good example. I, you know, uh, I have nothing against Tesla. I, I like Tesla. I'm not even gonna, I, you know, Elon is, he is this generation's John D. Rockefeller. Maybe not. Maybe that's Jeff Bezos. I don't know. It, it's always a toss up between him and Bezos. Uh, I, I will say one thing you will find out with, with any leader is that they're never, their, their vision is so big that they can only handle it in small amounts, yeah. right? So Elon's vision, Jeff's vision, uh, Warren, even in his elder statesman, you know, uh, age, his vision still is huge. He can only do it in small amounts. And those individuals are great at executing granularly, right? So I think for them, it's about, okay, if, if this is the end goal, whatever that is, what does it look like? in 2021 what does it look like in 2022 right and what i've loved about seeing their evolution and what they've created is every year they've added something right like the thing about i think life about business about relationships is that you can't stay stagnant right like okay if if i was doing a you know a, a podcast episode a month i got to do now two you know next year i got to you got to learn how to add you got to learn how to tweak you got to learn how to modify and that's because the trends change so fast, right? And you have to evolve and to grow with it. And what a lot of companies do, especially if they hit success early, I think in a lot of people, is that they keep it like this in a very linear path. But the problem is life isn't linear, right? So when life goes up and down, your stability will become in question, right? Like, are you really as stable as you say that you are, right? Um, and I think something that, people in fitness, people out of fitness, you have to ask yourself, am I really growing? And that's a real question. Like, did I really, did I really say or set out to do what I said I was going to do? Uh, and all things, right? Like wholeness, right? Wholeness is a big piece of it. And I think it's a, it's a healthy conversation and it's an honest, it's an honest conversation because we're human beings. So we're going to, we're going to drop, there's going to be slack in some area. But the cool thing about slack and deficiency and the cool thing about being a human is that there's always an opportunity to improve and to repair right or in, in theological sense to repent we there's always this there's always this this gap that can be filled with good stuff you know and ourselves we have to look at the gaps in our own life in our own processes and say how do we fill this with good stuff you know because we can fill it with we can fill it with garbage we can fill it with crap all day long but how do we fill these gaps? And and everybody has them. And it's cool. Like, okay, like it's okay. You're human. You're going to have a gap. There's going to be this voidness. How do you fill this with good stuff so that it becomes more natural to be the better version of yourself? Right. And I think sometimes we only, I would say, take the, you know, five to 10% that people see and focus on and perfect. And the other 85, 90% is the part that's really hurting. Right. And if you focused on that gap, the other 10, 15 percent would take care of itself. So I think for, for us, when it comes to the, the podcast, when it comes to whatever, you know, it's I'm looking and I'm seeing my own gas. I think about my own podcast. I'm like, you know, I know I need to do this. And I mentioned you, Anthony, before the show, I was like, I got a friend named John, John uh, DeGregorio. You know, he has podcasts. All he does is, do, you know, he does media, TV, uh, film review and shows. That and he kills it, but he every day it's like every week he's adding something, some new layer of context, some new technology he's implemented. Like he's so into it, 
that when I get on his show, I feel like I did my show a disservice. Right? Like, I'm like, man, my graphics don't look like that. Man, I don't even have an intro video. Man, how do you have royalty free music? Why are your cutscenes so, you know, like, how are you hitting, you know, how are you operating this from a laptop? You know, so he, but he's so into it because he said, and, and it wasn't always like this. When we first started, it was a little, you know, it wasn't like this, you know, and, but, but that's why, and I think that's why you can't have jealousy because, you know, life is weird. And in seasons, certain people will look like they're winning. And in other seasons, they will look like they're losing. That's why it's hard to be a back-to-back champion, right, in sports. Because, you know, this year, it, you know, last year it was the Bucks. This year it could be whoever, you know. That's, that's life. But if I'm able to see it and I'm able to say these are the gaps, how do I make myself better? Who do I need to partner with? Do I need to come back on Anthony's show, see what Anthony's doing, see the cool graphics he's inserted? see how he's evolved, see the new microphone, the new technology he's implemented, ask him questions, pick his brain. Because those are how, that's how you get better because, you know, none of us is God, right? Right. The only way I can get better, I got to be with somebody better. I got to be with somebody that's faster. I got to be with somebody that's quicker. I got to be with somebody that challenges me, that says, hey, look, let's do it this way instead of this way this time. And then you'll start piggybacking and feeding and say, that does work. And then you'll start formulating your own style within their own practice. You know what they say, Cody? Look at it. You're the average of the five people you hang out with. Yeah. You want to well, be better? Like, hang out with I'm, better people. Hey, hey, I hang out with you, man. So I think I'm doing well. <laughs> Me too. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's true. I love the ask. Get a bunch of talking points and I want to break them down just a little bit to be a little more specific, but they were phenomenal. So thank you. Different first, different aspects of your life. So you might have a business goal. You might have a personal health goal. You might have a relationship goal and there's different aspects of your life where somebody, like you said, maybe succeeding in one of those aspects, but they're hurting somewhere else. So let's take it different. For example, let's go with relationships, right? Let's say you want to improve your relationship with your significant other. Hang out with people who have a really good relationship with their significant other and then learn from them. Ask yourself, how can I be better? And that will help improve your relationship. You don't want to slack on that area of your life. So it's important, like everything else, you grow with it. You can't keep it stagnant. You can't just let it sit. What's going to happen to... The other person's going to get bored. You're going to start fighting a lot. Keep Mm -hmm. it fresh. Keep it new. And that's really how you're going to help build your relationship with your significant other and feel better in that aspect because that is an important part of our lives. Don't forget about that. It's not all about business. Then you do have the business side of it. How can I be better? If you do your same nine to five job every single day, get paid the same exact rate, and you're not happy, I'm going to emphasize that if you're not happy, if you're happy, great, keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not, ask yourself, how can I be better? How can I do better? How can I do more? In my gym, I'm changing things every week. I feel like every week we have a new program rolling out. It actually gets really overwhelming, but it's like I'm trying to keep things fresh. I'm trying to keep things new, kind of constantly grow with our environment. Because if I stay the same, we're going to fade out and disappear. Mm -hmm. And then you have health goals. And I'm going to be a little more specific on this one because this is an emphasis for both of our shows is let's say your New Year's resolution, right, is to lose 50 pounds for the year. 50 pounds is a lot of weight. I'm going to look up and see a giant step and I'm like, I can't do that. So what do you got to do is exactly what you mentioned, Cody. You got to set a smaller goal. So instead of saying, I'm going to lose 50 pounds, why not say I'm going to lose one pound a week? And then what happens? One pound, one pound's easy. That's a little change in my diet and I'll lose one pound. Yeah. Guess what? You do that every single week. You just lost 52 pounds for the year. Now you yeah. beat your goal by two pounds. Train your mind to think differently. Look at Jeff Bezos. I'm going to talk about him for a second. People who are that wealthy didn't start off that wealthy. Generational wealth is very little of the richest people. The richest people in the world didn't start off wealthy. They started off like you and I listen to the show right now. But what they did, like Jeff Bezos did, in his garage had a little 
table. He started a company which was already around, Shop Runner, for those that remember it, already did what Amazon does. And he said, how can I make this better? And he slowly worked off. I think Amazon started as books only. Yep. And he just started reselling books. And then he thought to himself, how can I make this better? How can I make this better? And he kept himself accountable and achieved little goals. He didn't wake up and go, all right, so today I'm going to become the biggest company in the world and I'm going to do it by tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> he didn't say that. He did little tiny goals that he achieved and eventually just started growing, 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 growing. If he did it, anyone listening to this show, any anyone in the world can do it. So stop blaming outside forces. Start looking from within. And I love how he said, keep yourself accountable by asking yourself, what can I do better? Am I the best version of myself? What am I doing wrong? It's not everybody else. It's you. And it's harsh, but it's true because when you take blame for something if i for example cody and i got into an argument and i said you know cody it's your fault then there's nothing i can do to fix that i can't make that better but if instead i said it's my fault i did something wrong sure. and then i could take a look at it and guess what i could fix it when you keep yourself accountable and you start changing with and control the controllables aspect of it i can control how i act i can control what i do and then I can start improving everything else in the world. So don't look out, look from within. And that, Cody, is how you're going to have the best freaking New Year's in the world. And by 2023, you're gonna, Cody's going to come on the show and tell me he's got 10 episodes a day coming out with these crazy graphics. He's going to hit a button and you're going to be like in 3D world. <laughs> All around, it's, it's going to be insane. <laughs> the Metaverse Podcast. I, I wish, man. I... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it's honestly true. It is definitely something that you have to settle yourself in. Um, and I, I I like the the Jeff Bezos analogy. I think um, if you were to ask him, if you could go back to one of the company, first of all, it went public in 95 or it was in 97, but he started in 93. If you asked him in 1993, is your company is going to become the largest marketplace, largest ecosystem in the world? They would, he would probably laugh. Well, he might accept it. He'd be like, Yeah, that's what I see. Other people around him be like, No, it's not. You only sell books. Matter of fact, most people don't even use online to purchase stuff. You know, so when he started it, e commerce really wasn't a thing. That was, that was like a made up word, right? It was like, it was, it was there, but it wasn't how most people went about transactions. Most people went to a physical location to buy something. And then when he started, Remember, he's starting at the height of what I would call the uh, expensive libraries, right? So he's starting when Barnes and Noble is at his all time zenith, when your, you know, mom and pop stores, you know, were implementing, you know, uh, coffee shops and Starbucks type of, you know, things to draw more customers. So he's starting when everybody wanted to go into a store for an experience. And then he creates experience that was not. It was, it was beyond his own niche. There was no really market demand for it. And this is why I say you have to have enough faith to continue because there was nothing that suggested that this company should have been a success in his original concept. And then he kept adding. It didn't say, if he would have just stayed a bookstore, Amazon would be where Audible is right now, which is obviously a subdivision of his company, right? Audible really is the blueprint <laughs> of the original Amazon. Yeah, I buy my groceries from Amazon. I do. I admit, I like Amazon groceries. It's delivered to my door. I pretty much have bought all my Christmas gifts via, via Amazon. Like Amazon is so almost universal that it's just, it's a place. It's a now, it's a thing, right? It's like, um, it's, it's, I'm going to just Amazon it, right? You don't even think twice. Like if you could buy it, you'd probably look, is it on Amazon? So when he started this, he literally said, I'm going to create something that has really no value right now. I'm going to keep investing in it and keep doing it because things do change and things will change, you know, and eventually people will get tired of fighting traffic. And eventually nobody will want to go to a, you know, uh, a 40,000 uh, square foot building just to look at books and not buy and buy expensive coffee. Eventually, you know, because of the way the world is going, people will be forced to order things from home. And when that day comes, 
I'm going to be the biggest dog in the yard, right? <laughs> hey, hey. And and he did it. And he and and I, and, that, and I know that sounds wild, but he created something that is basically like it's it's home delivery in a time when nobody was thinking home delivery. You know? So he and that's where your your vision has to be so big that you have to do it in small steps. Right? Your vision has to be so consuming that everybody around you thinks you're going to fail, that nobody believes in you. I think the sign of success is when nobody believes in you. It's like the inverse relationships that you have to look for, right? Like, okay, so you think I suck. In some weird way, that's evidence that you can do it. Like, oh, you don't think this is going to work, right? And then somehow you take that negativity. You know, you take that lull, right? And all those just painful experiences that human beings go through and say, they don't have faith in my product. They don't have faith in my business. I'm going to make it better anyway. I'm going to make it hotter anyway. I'm going to make it faster anyway. Right. And you keep on. And eventually the market will, will catch up to where you are. <laughs> like it's, it's weird. Like it, it all. And, and then, and then there will come a day where those trends that used to dominate the marketplace are no longer applicable and you will be the last one standing. And then you will have expansive exponential growth because you you stayed with it. And I think for us, and you mentioned relationships, and that's the key thing. Uh, something I've been focusing on is consistency. If you want to make a healthy relationship, you have to be present. You have to be continuously working on it. You have to get help. You have to be with people who've had success. You have to stop listening to people who've never been married, give you married advice. You have to be with people who've done it 30, 40, 50 years, went home to the same person, even when they did not want to. You have to, you have to be with people who have done it or else you're not going to know how to do it. Right, right, like, And something we have to learn as people and as business owners, we don't have to recreate the wheel. Now we can make this thing fly, right? We can go faster. But the will is already made, you know, like I, I think like now everybody wants to recreate this thing. Like, no, don't recreate it. Just learn how to tweak it, learn how to make it work for you, you know, but it's a will at the end of the day. So for for those out there, my my encouragement to you is that, you know, you're going to wake up one day in 2022 and want to throw it all the way. You're going to want to quit. I'm not just talking about fitness. You're just going to want to say, screw it screw everybody and anybody and myself included. And when you get to that point, you have to have enough love for yourself and enough faith to say, I'm worth continuing the fight. I'm worth it to somebody, even if you don't know who that person is. Right. And dig down and, 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 and grab hold to that thing and say, I'm worth it. Right. And from that feeling and from that mindset, slowly crawl your way out. You know, and, and I do mean slowly, slowly crawl because you will find yourself breathing. You will find yourself at the end of the tunnel and you will have literally lapped others because you kept moving forward, even if it's a centimeter at a time. Yeah, it just it's so true. And I know we've both been there, but you're going to find yeah. moments in your life where you just. Down in the dumps. We didn't start like this. We kind of yeah. worked our ways and just kind of did it. And the, the biggest act thing is just take action. Just right. take action every single day, no matter how small that step may be. Just do it. I mean, <laughs> Nike had the best slogan right there. Just, just do just it. Do it. I, I can't tell you just to bring it back to what I live and do is if I'm on a, talking to my friends on Friday, telling them I'm going to start working on a Monday, guess what? I'm not going to the gym Monday. But instead, if I said, I'm going to start now living a healthy life and started now, I have way better chances of being successful in it because I started now and didn't put it off. Keeping it a priority, which keeps you accountable. My accountability is these are my priorities in life. I need to do this above all else. For I know, Cody, you do this because I do the same thing. When it comes to working out, it's that's priority one. It's I'm going for myself. I'm working out. I have to. So mm -hmm. I will schedule everything else around my workout as opposed to trying to fit my workout in my schedule. Cause if you're doing that, it's not a priority in your life. Mm -hmm. But if that is your priority, you're then going to schedule other things around it. And then it's going to be so much easier to achieve your goal and to hit the gym and to 
eat healthier because you made that a priority. You're keeping yourself accountable to do it. Whatever it is you want to achieve out of life, keep it a priority. You want to have a better relationship. Keep your significant other uh, your priority. You want to lose weight. Keep the gym a priority. You want to be better in business. Keep your business the priority. Whatever, whatever it may be, you get the point. Keep that your number one thing and schedule life around that. And then by the end of the day, you will accomplish what you want to accomplish by keeping yourself accountable and doing it and learning that it's your fault for the reason you didn't hit your goals. And I want to emphasize that because it is your fault. And I want you to take home this message and say, Anthony, that's so degrading. You're saying it's my fault. No, it is your fault. I'm saying it's your fault because I'm giving you the harsh truth because you're not going to take that. You're you're blaming yourself and now you're going to fix it. It's your fault, but you can fix it. And you can achieve anything you want to achieve because you have the power to be the best version of yourself. Mic drop, Cody. <laughs> awesome. But, yeah. Let's let's wrap this thing up, man. So just one sentence, break down, sum it up. What does New okay. Year's mean to Cody? What are you walking away from this episode? Sure. And wrap up your show, man. Go for it. New Year's means to me. I am graced with another opportunity to do what I should have done 10 years ago. Um, Time, (laughs) your, uh, I'm trying to do this without being preachy, but your life has already in some aspect been designed in some aspect. There is a responsibility that all of us play in the writings of our own chapters. And what New Year's does, it presents your your pen in life with fresh ink to continue the story, <laughs> right? Right. The story is not, you know, the story, the, the pages, the length, uh, the font, that's already, a lot of that has been predetermined, but to continue it, right? To make sure that the story comes to a, a full completion, that the characters are fully developed, that the settings, the plot, the plot twist, everything happens the way it was supposed to happen. That's your part. Your part is to guide this pen, right? And a lot of us don't take the opportunity to realize that you've been graced with another opportunity to have ink in your pen. And what you do with that ink is is, is on you. What you do, how you do it, you know, what style, what format, that's all on you. But the ink is there. And you have to appreciate that you have paper and that you have ink. And my encouragement and to sum it up, what I got from it is that I want to create a story that can be read for thousands of years and somebody can look to and say, I can draw inspiration from that because when I see it, I see myself in it. You know, I I didn't, you know, I wasn't granted a million dollar business loan. (laughs) You know, I didn't have a small business loan. I just, I just did what I did and I wasn't perfect in it, but every day I, I appreciated the ink and the paper And I kept on keeping on. And I think for everybody out there, you have ink. It it might be a sucky pen. You might not like the story and how it's formulating, but you have the power to change some of the narratives. The characters are going to be where they are. Those characters are there for a reason. But how you interact, how you engage, all that is going to be left up to you and how you want to guide this pen. And at the end, you want to say, I've written a beautiful story. So I encourage all of you to write your own story and to make it as cool as possible i i'd love that man write your own story finish it out it's you have the power to make your own book and and my takeaway i think i pretty much said it like 75 times is i keep myself accountable i love new year's because it's a way to look back and say did i do what i wanted to do this year what could i've done better how can i make the next year even better and i look deep within to really learn how i can move forward with the new year. And I, I don't do just one aspect of life and putting all my aspects of life Yeah, because it's important to me to be a better fiance slash now husband coming up. But I, I want to be the best version of that. I can be, I want to be the best family member in my media family. I can be, I want to be the best business person. I could be, I have a, a dream in life something since I was 
oh my god i can't even remember. since the, my first memory of what i wanted to do in my life i live by a quote is that they say you only die they say you die twice once when you perish and the second time when the last person mentions your name and that's really deep because it's so true it's I don't want to die twice. I'm okay with dying the first time. I get it. It's a part of life. But dying that second time, that's on me to make sure that I live forever. And you, a great example, just if you're not understanding what the quote means, uh, just pick a name out of a hat. George Washington died 300 years ago. We're still talking about him. He's never died twice. Somebody like that, um, that's, that's my story. That's what I want to do. That's who I want to become. And thank you guys for embracing us on this Brand new, fresh start. We took everything. We took Cody's show. We took my show. Let's, let's just do it together. Let's have fun with it. So all of you right now are going to go hop on and subscribe to It Is What It Is with my man, Cody Kelly, right there. You're going to go hop on and subscribe to Health and Fitness Redefined Podcast, guys, with me right now. Turn those bells and whistles on if you're listening on YouTube. And thank you guys for joining us. And we will see you you next time cody sign us out man yo connect with anthony amen follow him on instagram follow him on all his social media platforms subscribe to his page you're missing out if you're not you're literally losing because you're not following this man he posts positive stuff i mean he'll help you uh, a lot of people will charge you for every single advice he will literally connect out of his own dime and wants you to be the best version of you you're missing it if you're not subscribed Follow him, subscribe to the page, follow him on YouTube. Man, blow him up, guys. And if you're in the New York area, you already know he's opening up a second location. I'm sure that location is coming near to you. Join. Why not? <laughs> you know, you have, net, you have Netflix. You know, like, you know, joy. Just joy. And, oh, yo, connect with me. You know, if you want your signature sports supplements, CVMK Global.store. Those supplements are designed for you. Be your own hero. IG at CVMK. 33. Until next time, guys, I appreciate it. Until next time, guys.